I'm here to present uh, on the topic of reliability. Um, on behalf of Stefan uh, Armson, who's the working group chair, Stefan was on a call with Rel this morning. He's actually in Germany, so we, we relieved him of, the, uh, of having to travel all the way here just to present a 10 or 15 minute presentation. So I'm going to do that. Who, who's interested in reliability as a topic? I know just superficially, but who's really interested in it? Four. That's actually about right. <laughs> Um, throughout my long R&D career, um, it always seemed that reliability was like a second thought. The first thought is to get stuff out there and get money, right? As soon as possible. And then with all the time scales of delivery and the pressure from the product managers to get things out there, guess what tends to get left until later? things to do with reliability and fault management and security and a bunch of other stuff that you can't monetize. You don't sell your customers the reliability of the network. You sell your customers the speed and the, and the low price, right? But then when it goes wrong, the, a fault happens and the network goes down, guess what the customers think about your company? They don't think a lot of it, do they, right? So for me, it's really important to address the uh, reliable and secure, I'm getting confused in my head, uh, reliability really early on. How are we going to assure that this new stuff, NFV, is going to deliver um, a reliable service? So in, I contend that it's a vital part of network management is to be able to do fault management and handle errors that occur in the infrastructure. I contend that, but only four of you are probably motivated to put your hand up in a product meeting and say, hold on, what's the reliability strategy? Trust me, I've done that a number of times in my career, and people look around at me and they go, who's this guy? that's talking about reliability, because we're really interested in how fast the network's gonna go and how many, how many customers we can pass with it in no time at all. So reliability for me is a, a passion, but it's not universally shared across the industry, okay? However, when I bumped into um, the chief architect of BT in my previous career, Brian, welcome. Um, Brian Levy, one of my former colleagues in BT. When I bumped into Carl Penaluna at the Broadband World Conference in 2013, a year after we launched the NFV industry collaboration, I hate the word movement, right, because it's kind of got a little bit toxic lately, um, is that he's, the first thing he said to me was, Don, this stuff about virtualization, it's all very well, but how am I going to fault it? Where's the red light going to light? What's going to happen when a virtual something goes down? How do I know what to do with it? Right? So he made it very clear to me right from the get-go that NFE fault management was his, as an operations guy, his number one priority. Right? That means that's important. So four of you, who now thinks reliability is important? Is it still four? <laughs> Hooray! I, I measured that, Tim. We actually increased the, the, the importance of reliability by a factor of three in the first five minutes. So that's really good. Um, so new challenges. Stefan put the word challenges on the slide. I added the word opportunities. Because in my mind, NFV enables you to do all kinds of cool things to increase reliability of our future network. And it's not about five nines. Um, little anecdote, quickly. Is this, this is not counting down. That means I've got an infinite amount of time to talk. Um, who's controlling? You're controlling it. Great, I've, I've been talking for five minutes and it still says 15. So I'm, I'm in good shape here. I've not, oh shoot, okay, better, be, better quick up. I'm just trying to entertain you all. Because if you leave here, having been entertained about reliability, I actually want you to do something about it. I want you to go back to your companies and say, 
reliability is really critical to the future of um, NFV. And if we don't sort reliability out, then we're not going to monetize our products on NFV because network operators won't buy them. So we've got to really sort this out. Now going back to the, um, the opportunities, um, for me, it's not about five nines, right? That's the first thing to say. Um, I met a very senior manager within Intel back in the early part of 2012 when we were trying to figure out how we would get the industry to collaborate on this new thing that we subsequently called NFE. And it was Rose Schuler, and Rose said, Don, Intel would be very pleased to help get this thing off the ground as long as you don't tell me you want five nines from the servers. And I said, Rose, I'm not interested in five nines. I'm interested in being able to assure the level of service that I've promised my customers, whatever that is. So it's service availability that's important. And then how you deliver that with the underlying infrastructure is an implementation thing. And the idea is you can engineer with NFE any degree of reliability you want. Five nines, six nines, seven nines, eight nines. Trust me, you should be able to do that if you're clever enough because you can pull resources in an NFE world. As long as you do proper things around designing it so that you've got the appropriate level of, re of reliability. Good fault management requires the ability to detect and correlate errors and to forward information to operations. There is nothing on this slide that you will disagree with. So what you're saying, isn't this all obvious? Well, it is obvious, except you've got to actually do something about it in the specs. And that's what the reliability and availability working group is all about. It's a very small group. In fact, I believe it's too small right now to be effective. We need more vendors to start getting interested in the opportunities for your products to be engineered to be superior to your competitors because they've got superior ability to deliver the availability we need at the service layer. So I encourage you, any of you, I know some of you like Pierre from Mixia, it's meat and drink to your companies, but others should come and look at what this work is, is doing and think about how you could get involved in it. Because if you can differentiate yourself on being able to provide enhanced reliability capabilities to network operators, you're going to find they're going to like it. They're going to like it a lot because it impacts operations in a big way. Um, this rather busy slide um, is simply saying that there's a number of different ways to detect faults in a virtualized infrastructure. And if you had all of these fault instances reporting telemetry to the OSS layer, you're going to get telemetry storms when things happen, right? And so what you need to be able to do is to have some kind of hierarchical processing, filtering, correlating, and doing cool things. This is where the opportunities are. Uh, one of the first conversations I had, Pierre, with your colleagues at Ixia way back in 2011 was to tell them about virtualization and how the test industry is going to be transformed. You won't be selling physical testers to the same degree. You'll be selling virtualized testers. And if you can virtualize the testers, you've now got infinite possibilities to do cool things with testers. Now, I remember the product management, not in Ixir, in another company, so I won't finger your product managers, to say, but Don, that really cannibalizes our really cool stuff. I said, yeah, that's the problem the whole industry's got. This cannibalizes a lot of cool stuff, but it gives you opportunities to generate a heck of a lot more cool stuff. Um, this rather boring slide really talks about some new work we're doing in RHEL 008. Uh, which is really a, a document which is starting to now tackle some hard-nosed requirements. Meaning, we've used the word normative um, today a couple of times. This is about getting the industry agreed that there's some things need to be mandatory inside the NFE infrastructure to support um, the reliability and availability requirements. So think, being able to do things like detect errors, believe it or not, there's a, there's a conversation in the rail working group, or there was a conversation in the rail working group, which went along the lines of, um, I've got a virtual network function which has got some internal uh, 
um, self-checking mechanism, and it detects an error. Maybe it's a code error, but it's, it recovers from that, and because it recovered from the error and continued working, there was no need to feed anything up to network management. Well, I don't know about you, but if something's happened to my vehicle and actually it's been corrected by some redundant mechanism, I'd actually like to know for future reference in case my car stops working halfway down the highway because the next error is the one that tips the virtual network function into non-operation. So I'm interested in how we might uh, define some requirements for error reporting which don't result in storms of things that don't necessarily cause instant uh, failover of the network but are trends that I'd like to know about so I can do things like predictions of future network problems. Or obvious things about notifying things. How, how will we notify failures in an NFE environment? Where are the telemetry paths? How does MANO uh, report those things? So the reliability working group is really looking at the fundamental requirements for reliability and then working with things like uh, groups like IFA and SOL to define the actual requi uh, hard-nosed requirements on MANO and other parts of the infrastructure and eventually API functionality that will be used for that telemetry to be communicated to upper layers. So some target use cases. Um, there's a couple of examples here. Root cause analysis is an interesting one, isn't it? Um, I don't know about you, but it's quite a few of, quite often times things like fans fail. Well, a fan failure doesn't really lead to immediate uh, collapse of my PC, does it? But sooner or later, there's going to be a temperature problem, right? So the idea that you might alarm fans is a relatively new idea. 20 or 30 years ago, the fan failed. Nobody knew. There wasn't an alarm for a fan failure. Somebody went and looked and said, the fan stopped. Something needs to happen. Well, clearly, a fan failure in an environment is there for a reason. Best, better not to have fans, truthfully. If we've got fans, it's not the greatest. But a fan failure should be notified because sooner or later, that is going to cause a problem. It may even be starting to decrease the reliability of components from which that cooling depends. Then correlation. This, the idea of some of the work is that if an approach to failure reporting it by one vendor that interoperates with a VNF coming from another vendor, and now you have a combination of failures, but the notification is inconsistent between the two, then you may not be able to figure out exactly what the impact is going to be on the infrastructure and take decisions there. So the idea is you have some consistency in how you uh, notify failures. And then clearly fault uh, prediction. One of the things, obviously, the things I know about you, but when I built PCs about 20 years ago and you plugged in um, sim, uh, memory, 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 um, memory cards into your PC, there was this thing called like an error protection thing, wasn't there? It says that you, you can detect errors and recover from errors. And indeed, that's critically important to much of our silicon industry is that the, 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 the silicon is designed or the, or the system is designed to be recoverable or to have correction within it. But actually, what if there is a trend going on in the underlying infrastructure? The errors have been corrected. But there is a trend that you'd like to know in case there's going to be a more a serious failure later. So being able to predict um, errors through things of reporting, things such as memory failures. Now, all these are a little bit implementation specific. And what is really important for etcnf is we don't want to get too much into implementation because that's the job of you vendors, right? That's your innovation piece. But we want to be able to give you some guidance as to what things we think are useful for us to operate a network for maximum reliability and availability for our services, right? And that's what this is really all about. And I'm done. Uh, actually, 33 seconds um, before I finished. Um, so who, who thinks reliability is an interesting topic now? Did my job. Honestly, it really is an interesting topic. And um, so I'm on a bit of a mission uh, to, uh, to evangelize reliability. And I'd like all your help, right? So trust me, Carl Penluna in BT, chief architect. I think Carl's still there, chief architect, right? Um, 
number one priority with me was NFV, how am I going to fault it? That's why this work's critical. So, Don, um, you didn't mention about the deployment model. Um, if you've got a VNF, you can deploy it all on the same processor, on different processors, in different clusters, different components on different things. It, the way that it's deployed actually will change its reliability model. So, have you considered that aspect? Because it's something new. I mean, normally we consider that you mentioned the aspects of the fault management, which is typical with a PNF as well. But the difference with the VNF is that the same VNF can be deployed in different ways, and being able to specify and control the way that it's deployed is going to be very important for future reliability model. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that that's, that, in fact, that's, that's quite kind of an example where we haven't really got into tools for, for doing network design and deployment design. So if you, if you buy a physical network appliance and you've, designed, you've developed, a, say, a 1 plus 1 redundancy model where you've got you know, main and standby, well, then the, the design is that goes in that rack. Um, uh, and, if, and if there's something that needs to be physically changed, well, it, the, there's, a, there's a standby, but it's in the other, the other part of town, right? It's actually on a different fiber or something physically separate with those two things. The same kind of design techniques are going to need to apply in NFV, aren't they? So your VNF, uh, your, your reliability scheme needs to take into account the underlying infrastructure on which you run it. And um, in fact, I saw Nakamura to stand. Tetsu, are you in the room somewhere? Yeah, he's at the back. Tetsu uh, wrote a really interesting paper about failover for a mobile core uh, based on two data centers that are geographically uh, separated. So in the, in the extreme, you've actually got fairly significant um, separation of those two entities. But then you have to start to think about state and where's state stored if you're then going to do main and standby. So this is quite a complex game. And that's why uh, there's a lot of opportunity for differentiation amongst vendors and vendors that make tools that will aid operators in designing the systems for an appropriate target level of availability. Now, the last 20 years, availability has been a bit of a Cinderella. When I was at BT Labs, we had a whole racks of equipment that were running 24-7 so that we could calculate the component reliability and validate that the components that BT was buying actually did meet the reliability claims that the vendors said they did. We don't do that anymore, but we do audits, don't we, of, of components. So the same kind of tools will need to be created to help us design systems based on this stuff that, for, for that target level of service availability. One more, hang on. One, one more question, and then we'll wrap it up for this, uh, this uh, topic. Thank you. I want to touch on the point about new business opportunities that virtualization brings. You, you talked about the testing equipment guys that uh, are going to have a problem, but they have an opportunity. Things that were in the past premium and you have to put a piece of hardware, now you can virtualize it. And you can offer things like finish your provisioning by testing or do constant testing, but you don't really have to put a 200 bucks box in the site in an office. You just spawn a small virtual machine and you have it running. So instead of fear, we have a lot of opportunity to make money in a different way. And that's very much related to, we can do a, a lot of more things in reliability just because it's virtualized, it's not so expensive. Yeah, thank you for the point. It's, it's a really good point, isn't it? That um, there, there are all kinds of ways to make money um, if you have innovation in your company and being able to innovate in this space, being, because it's software-based, once, you, once you've, I, I, all I can say is it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a clean landscape for innovation right now. And so many places where you could imagine, particularly if you think about reliability availability is important, and not, not, more of you do today than did yesterday, you can go away and think, crikey, there's a real opportunity here. Um, to, to, to do some new kinds of things. Thanks for making that point. Okay, thank you.